Looking for something to help you get back into your piano practice? Well, today I'd like to introduce you to a couple of books that I've discovered that are aimed specifically for people coming back to the piano after a break. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. Welcome to Tommy's Piano Corner, I'm Tommy. The place for returning pianists, or indeed anybody who loves a piano, to share tips and ideas about how to get the best from this great hobby. If you're a returning pianist like myself, I'm sure you've been frustrated by the lack of material that's available for people like us. There's a whole wealth of books for people who are beginners, adult beginners, child beginners, there are plenty of methods and courses for people who are continuing in their piano studies, but there's not so, so much available aimed really at people who are coming back after a long break. We returning pianists aren't beginners, of course, in the practical or the theoretical sense. All of that theory we learned all those years ago is locked somewhere in our minds and we just need to be able to recall it. Similarly, it's staggeringly amazing what our fingers can remember even after so many years if we can just open those pathways again and let the music flow. As a result, going back to those beginners courses isn't really necessary for us or even enjoyable, I would say. We really need something that's more aimed at jogging our memories rather than teaching us from scratch. Over the past three years as I've been trying to relearn, I've basically just chosen pieces that I remembered I played from many years ago, or other pieces that I've heard somewhere and thought, oh, that would be interesting to learn. But I thought it would be interesting to try and do something a little more structured and work through something that would take me through a set of pieces of progressively more difficult levels to try and improve my technique bit by bit. As I was searching for something, I came across a couple of books written by Melanie Spanswick. These are books one and two in the Play It Again Piano series, which is subtitled The Perfect Way to Rediscover Piano. I recognise the name Melanie Spanswick as she's a regular contributor to Pianist magazine. I actually subscribe to their digital issue, and I've linked that below for you so you can check it out later on. I've always enjoyed her contributions to the magazine, so I thought the books would be well worth looking into further. After some reading of the reviews and the descriptions of these books, I thought that book two probably looked more around the level that I would need rather than book one. So I ordered book two from Amazon and was delighted when finally it arrived. The books essentially centered around 21 pieces some of them really well known, others, to me at least, much less well known. They start at what's termed as a late intermediate level, so around grades 5 or 6. Going to early advanced, so grades 6 to 7, then to advanced around grades 7 to 8, and then late advanced, so grade 8 and beyond. The book starts with a nice, short, basic introduction reminding us of some basic piano techniques around posture and hand shape. Also some tips on approaching sight reading, some reminder tips on approaching our scales and arpeggios. What I found good here was that these are just short introductions, so it doesn't try to go back to basics about how scales are constructed and this kind of thing, which is, I think, more relevant to pianists who've done all of this study at some point in the past. The 21 pieces that Melanie has chosen are these. Solfeggetto in C minor by C.P. Bach. The Fabulous Furelies by Ludwig van Beethoven. One of Mendelssohn's Songs Without Words, Opus 30, number 3. Hermann Brennan's Study in F Major. A piece called Lavender Haze by Eleanor Cobb. And a piece by Melanie herself called Seahorse Dream. These are all the late intermediate pieces. In the early advanced, she's taken the Allegro from the Suite in G Major by Handel. 
the Allegro from the Sonata in C major by Mozart, the Adagio Sostenuto from Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata, John Patisse Kramer's Study in C major, Brahms' Waltz in A flat major, and a feat called Sweat Feet Stomp by Sven Hormuth. In the advanced section, we've got Franz Schubert's Impromptu in A-flat major, Stephen Heller's Warrior's Song, The Beautiful Girl with the Flaxen Hair by Debussy, a traditional song, The London Derriere, arranged by Barry Turner, and then a piece called Fiesta by Joachim Turina. And then finally, the four pieces in late advanced are one of Bach's Preludes and Fugues, so the Prelude and Fugue in C minor, Chopin's Raindrop Prelude, Scott Joplin's The Entertainer, and finally, That War Horse, which is the Prelude in C sharp minor by our good friend Rachmaninoff. Some of these pieces, even in the late advanced section, are pieces that I remember learning many years ago and so are pretty much like old friends with whom I'm looking forward to reacquainting myself. However, many others are totally new to me, so I'm looking forward to getting to know them. With each individual piece, Melanie first outlines the elements of piano technique that this piece will help to improve. She then goes on to give some suggested practice techniques that are particularly relevant to the piece in question. Of course, after talking about how to practice it, she also gives some advice on the basic interpretation that would go well with the piece in question too. Again, this is all at the level of hints and reminders rather than trying to go back to first principles that you might need to do with an absolute beginner pianist. So to look at the way she's laid out each individual piece, let's look at the first one, which is C.P. Bach's Solfeggetto in C minor. Melanie introduces this piece as being particularly useful to help develop finger strength articulation, and a more acute awareness of keyboard geography. Her first piece of advice is to practice the C minor scale and arpeggio, as this is of course the key on which the piece is based. I thought it would also be useful to practice G minor and F minor as well, as the first theme of this piece which is in C minor, is then repeated pretty much note for note in G minor and again in F minor. Then Melanie suggests taking just the first four bars and practicing these extremely slowly, using different articulations and different rhythms. She actually gives some suggestions in the book which are all fully written out for you, so you can follow them but of course reminds that there are many other possibilities that you can choose from, so you're free to use your imagination and see what other rhythms you can come up with. When I've practiced, I've basically used these rhythms. And again, as for the scales and arpeggios, after I would practiced the first four bars in C minor, I went on to the parts in the piece where these are repeated in G minor and F minor and practiced those sections in exactly the same way. 
Next, Melanie goes on to describe ways that one can practice hands separately, both for the left hand and for the right hand, and then some hands together practice techniques. On the whole, I found most of the advice here in this particular piece was around getting the music nice and crisp and well articulated. It was also good that I found her advice was around remembering to use more than just your fingers when you're playing. And here she was recommending using slight rotations of the wrist to enable the sound and the overall touch to be clearer. And then finally, she also gives some tips on how you might want to use the metronome in your practice and how you might want to practice the leaps that there are in the piece. In the interest of time, I'm not going to go into all of these different pieces of advice here today. I found Melanie's advice to be absolutely spot on when I was getting started with this piece. In fact, in my early practice of it, when I was getting used to the structure, the harmony, the various sections of it, I used every one of her techniques in detail to try and help me get the piece under my fingers. I probably spent about seven hours over the course of a month doing this. However, of course, we all have different problems in the way that we play piano, and some things are easier for others, and some things are more difficult for other people. I found, for example, that Melanie specifically called out the leaps in this piece as being an area that needed focus. And luckily for me, for once, this was an area that I found relatively simple, so I didn't really need to think about the leaps too much. However, my passage work has always been fairly lousy, to be honest. I've always found it difficult to control scale passages in a piece, even though I did all of my scales right up to grade eight, so I should have this kind of thing well under control by now. Therefore, what I did was I created a set of little exercises around those scale passages in the piece to help me get them smoother and more under control when playing. Then each day, I basically spend five or so minutes during my practice time just drilling those exercises, first in C minor, then in G minor, and then in F minor. For the remainder of my daily practice time on the solfeggetto, I would spend some time practicing it nice and slowly, using different touches, legato, staccato, and different rhythms, right end to end, right the way through the piece. Generally speaking, I wouldn't continue to play end to end with a piece of music, but because this is such a short piece anyway, I think there's little to be gained from breaking it down into too many small pieces once you've got it reasonably under control. Of course, when playing through end to end, if I notice a mistake or an unevenness, then what I'll do is I'll stop at that point and I'll drill that particular part until I can get it better, until I got it how I want it to sound. And then I'll play it through once at a faster tempo. Being careful, of course, to try and keep it to a speed that I feel I can control properly, rather than just playing as fast as I possibly can. 
So far I've probably put in about nine hours work over the past two months doing this. I now have it to quite a reasonable standard really. By no means perfect, I still am prone to wrong notes every now and then. I'm still prone to a little unevenness. But the question is, once you've got it to a reasonably good state, what do you do? Do you keep going or do you put it to one side and move on? You know, there's a school of thought that says you need to practice until you can't get it wrong. But there's also another school of thought that says done is better than perfect. I have to admit, I'm more to the second school of thought at the moment. I think there's definitely probably value in continuing to practice something, but we all have limited time, and I think you quickly get into a diminishing return scenario when you just keep going over the same piece again and again and again. So I've decided that from tomorrow onwards, I'm going to put it to one side for a while, and I'm going to move on to the next piece, which is Furelli's. In fact, I started looking anyway at Furelli's a couple of weeks ago. So just to work out the more difficult parts I'd like to look at first. I'll come back to the Solfagetto next year, I think, sometime in the early part of the new year. But, you know, of course, every now and then, I'll still continue to play it through because it's a very entertaining little piece of music. In short, then, I highly recommend getting hold of this book if you're looking for something that will help you rebuild and then improve your techniques slowly, using pieces that get progressively more and more difficult. I've put a link to this below for you, where you can find it on Amazon. As I progress through each of these pieces, I'll do a short video and I'll post it here, so you can see how I've used and adapted Melanie's advice as I've gone through the repertoire she proposes. For me, the only real downside to this book is that unfortunately there is no Kindle edition and, you know, whilst having a printed book is great, I much prefer to be able to just have everything on my iPad so that I've always got it with me wherever I am and I can always refer to it whenever I feel like it. But I'm sure maybe at some point in time that will be taken care of and we'll see this book appear on Kindle. If you're not already, do subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner. Click the little bell icon so that you're notified of all new videos as they're released. I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next week.